Hey, how's it going? My name is Jackie Fish, and welcome to Total War Free Kingdoms. I was lucky enough to get my hands on the campaign, and in today's video, we're going to go ahead and dive into it, playing as the bandit queen Jing Zhang. Zhang Jing? Zhang Jing, I think is how you pronounce it. Again, apologies if I mess up any pronunciations. Let me know in the comments down below, and I will try my best to go ahead and get it sorted for launch when the game does come out in a month's time. I was told that I can go ahead and show you guys an hour's worth of gameplay play or up to turn 50 whatever comes first so what i'm going to be doing is i'm going to be splitting this video into two parts and if you guys want to see the next part i'll upload it as soon as this video gets i don't know 350 likes so if you guys hit that i'll upload the video whether it's the same day or the following day it will be up so let's jump into the campaign and I'll show you guys who we will be playing. Obviously right here, the Bandit Queen. Now I think in the actual records of the Three Kingdoms, there's only a couple lines about her and it was debated whether or not it was her or her sister who it was talked about. And you can actually play as the sister as well in this. So it's a nice kind of nod to that. She starts off, I believe, as uh, a noble at her court. So you can go ahead and play as both of them if you want to. But kind of Zhang Jing is the main focus of it. She has some really cool, unique abilities, and as well as that, she has an extremely hard starting position, as she doesn't really claim a lot of territory. You can claim a lot of territory with her, but she mainly focuses on making people fear her, and by becoming tributary because they fear her so much, and we'll take a look at that mechanic now. As you can see, we start off in the northern part of China in the mountains, which will go ahead and provide us with some pretty good defenses. We'll be able to bottleneck the enemy forces. We also start off very close to the Dong himself, Zhong Zhao, and we're going to have to be very careful because he can send forces to come and deal with us if we make our way southwards towards his capital. But he also does seem to die quite early on in the campaign, so, you know, we're going to have to keep an eye out for him, but hopefully we won't have to worry about him too much. We obviously have the other band it lord to the north of us we also have yon Shao right here over the right hand side and i believe all the coalition dudes are kind of like around this area of the map so we have a lot of decisions do we go kind of towards the capital to sack it do we go over and deal with all the coalition boys or do we just go ahead and claim the mountains and just send out raiding armies there's a lot we can go ahead and decide we also get some uh, cool units as well and some buildings but we'll look at them when we are in the campaign i'm also going to be using the romance graphics options as well no sorry the records gra graphics options which will basically go ahead and be a lot more grittier rather than more of the fantasy feel that the romance side of things have i honestly don't know what one i prefer yet so i'm just something i'm gonna have to mess around with and see but yeah let's dive into the campaign and get ourselves started <laughs> Luoyang Yi Pian Huai Zhu Mie Yan Huan Ho Chao Ye Hun Luan Han Shi Qin Yu Ji Xin Zhi Shang Tian Zi Bi Si Wang Chao Bi Mie Zheng Jiang Ding Hui Chen Zi Da Shi Er Jue Qi Zheng Ge Tian Xia Zhong Jiang Na Ru Zheng Jiang Nang Zhong Okay guys, so we are now in the campaign. This is whereabouts we start off, obviously in the northern mountains of China. We are quite close to the capital and the other coalition warlords. So we're going to have to make some decisions. Do we head towards the capital right away, going through the huge rivers of China? Or do we make our way northwards to go ahead and kill the other bandit warlord and secure ourselves these mountains, which will just be, you know, basically impenetrable fortresses that we can launch raiding assaults. I haven't quite decided yet. We'll see what we can get done in the 50 turns. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and continue on. So we've got some missions to begin this off, basically to defeat the Han forces as well as build up a power base. Our army starts off pretty decently. You know, we've got some of these uh, cool axemen. These axemen are basically hybrid bowmen and also dual wielding axes so they're very deadly and we also have some very nice weapons as well 24 melee attack rate is extremely good at the beginning of the game and also 3.4k melee damage so she'll do some serious work however this is nothing like the previous preview build i got heroes can't tank entire armies anymore which i'm really thankful that they changed heroes if they get pinned down by a lot of half decent infantry they will die pretty quickly so you have to be careful this isn't warhammer you have to still you know 
think this is a person and if they get surrounded they're gonna die if they're not supported quickly so it's a nice little improvement since the previous build i played before the delay but let's just dive into this campaign as i said i'm gonna be editing out boring bits of turn timers and basically just trying to get through as much of this campaign as we can with having the most awesome experience so expect lots of battles expect lots of sieges and we'll try our best to bring our infamy up as high as possible um, so yeah, as you can see, our infamy is kind of like our main faction ability, which we need to go ahead and try and keep as high as possible. Because the higher this is, the more bonuses we get. And it's basically how we level up through the court itself. If we take a look at... If we take a look at the faction sum summary, you can see we have a different setup to the coalition warlords as well as the governors. We want to push our way up here and then obviously become empress. And we do this basically by just leveling up our infamy rather than taking settlements. But let's anyway, let's move on to take this settlement and push on. Something I want to show you guys in the battle as well. And we'll just delegate this because we just don't have much time. So I want to move on as much as possible. Okay, nice. So we've got another mission right now to go ahead and build any building and I feel like you get these missions fairly often in the early game just to go ahead and ease you into it now as a veteran of the series I don't really need these missions but I'll still take the bonuses nonetheless so we've gone ahead and got the option to upgrade or build a building and I think what I might do is I might actually end up getting rid of one of these buildings so we have two workshops basically here well that they're kind of different we've got one labor building and we've got one state workshop I really like the way that the UI is set up as well in the building menu because you can actually build straight from here if you want to, uh, which I think is very nice and a great way of doing it. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to keep the uh, the state workshop, I think, because it can lower corruption and give us a lot of money. And I'm going to get rid of this one right here um, and build something else there, whether it's military or something else. I also think upgrading the main city is also a probably a pretty good idea, but I also need money as well. We're not actually going to upgrade anything right now because what I want to do is I want to recruit some men next turn. I also think recruiting more soldiers is going to be a great idea. And I noticed that we could recruit some of these hidden axes, but they are ridiculously expensive. I guess being a hybrid unit, it kind of tells right there. Um, but we're just going to pick up some spearmen, I think, um, right away. Probably just some cheap spearmen because we don't really have the best economy in the game. And we need just troops so we can use them to take more cities and obviously improve that economy. As well as that, our kind of secondary warlord, or I guess lieutenant, I think is what they call them in the game, isn't very happy with us. His satisfaction is reducing. He's also got rivalries within the faction. I don't know who else he hates. Who does he hate? He hates Ying Li. Okay, cool. Well, I mean, I'm not going to get rid of him because I imagine that all my characters at the start of the game are pretty useful. However, we can go ahead and give him some bonuses. I think accessories are really good. Uh, yeah, we can give him some accessories to boost his happiness. As well as that, you can also change his weapons. All default characters kind of have a base set of weapons. So if I'm like, oh, I don't want this guy to use one sword. I want him to use a ceremonial sword or an axe instead. You can do so and it changes in the campaign. So if you change armor sets or weapons on your generals, you will see them on the campaign map as well as in battle, which I think is a really neat feature. So something we need to really do before we do fight this battle is do an assignment. Assignments are basically like edicts and each character has his own set of ones that he can do. Some of them can do the same ones and as you level them up basically you'll just gain more and more powerful ones and it's a really nice way of like an interesting way of assigning characters to make them happy as well as using these to go ahead and boost your empire. We currently do have someone who is pretty unhappy with us. His satisfaction is decreasing. So we're probably going to go and send him in. He also provides us with a ton of food as well, which I think goes ahead and boosts our growth. Yeah, the more food we have, the more income we get. So let's go ahead and send this unsatisfied guy to basically boost our food production, which is good because we did just build a land survey office. And it will also just give me four food as well. So let's do that. And the next turn, that should kick in and be very beneficial for me. Once again, a fairly easy battle i imagine their last province will have an army in but for now this is just going to be an easy victory and we're going to secure this territory gain ourselves a nice little a boost to our infamy as well by just winning the battle we gain free and we're just going to occupy it once again because this is going to kind of be our stronghold we have now met a bunch of other factions Oh yeah, there is uh, there is the beginning of the Dong's empire as well. His capital is all the way over there. So 
we are literally in striking distance of the capital if we want to but I do really want to go after this iron mine and complete our settlement kind of build up. Nice, I've got some events boosting up the uh, relationship between me and my sister. That's nice to see. So you can actually see in the army as well who people like and who people don't like. So our current general right here is not a fan of me and my sister. So we might have to end up getting rid of him. I mean, he's fine. Even if he doesn't like us, he can still be in this army. But that will start to slowly, you know, spread discontent. And this could just be because um, there's a few traits that he does doesn't necessarily agree with or anything um but you know no one really likes him so we're probably going to remove him when we have the money to do so but right now we just don't we're currently replenishing and then we're going to move north and take the iron mine and hopefully secure the territory but as you can see it's a long way to get there and we have to go through a winter i think very soon as well so we're probably going to hold up in the settlement for now and then move on the settlement after winter oh damn this faction has just declared war on us to the west that's very interesting um why well, have to go ahead and be careful of them i mean luckily they're pretty far away so hopefully they won't uh, come and take us um oh wow look at that the han empire has retreated yeah everyone around us is just going to war with us so this is going to be tricky to, to beat them all back especially that our army is all the way over here um but you know i'm sure once we've taken this we can then just rotate around and help out and just like that the dong has been slain Yihuyo just like that, he has been slain by Lu Bu. And now, I, I imagine the majority of China is going to just fall into disarray as everyone vies for power. So this is where the fun begins. Obviously, everyone declared war on me right there. He has been killed. Uh, who succeeds him, does it say? Yeah, so Dong Ming has, uh, has uh, gone ahead and taken over his rulership. Um, but let's just move in, take these iron mines before the bandit king does move in. And they do. Oh, we have a reinforcing army. So, yeah, let's dive into this battle. We'll have our first battle. It'll be an Iron Mine battle. It'll be good. And I'll be able to show you guys a few of the UI features. Okay, guys. So, we are now in the battle. We are fighting over a minor settlement. But it's nice to see that minor settlements have made a comeback. And it's a pretty cool map for an Iron Mine. Um, I think there's a, a couple variants of these Iron Mines and minor settlements. And there's individual maps for every single different type of minor settlement as well, which is cool to see. I've set up my army a little bit further forward you can see these guys are vanguard deploying because of the ability we just went ahead and secured and this is again what the game looks like in records mode i can quickly show you guys what it looks like in romance mode if you want to go ahead and compare really quickly so i'll do that and obviously by records mode i mean romance mode so this is kind of like the default of the game and i think it does look very cool it's very bright and colorful and this is probably how the game is supposed to be played however i just much prefer the more grittier feel of it but honestly i have been going back and forth and i don't know maybe i will come around to the romance side of things like i have with so many of the ui features so we're back on records mode right now at least with the graphic settings and i want to show you guys a few of the ui features there's a handful of them which i think are really well implemented into the game just to make the transition really slick so what you can do is if you go over to the interface section you have a whole bunch of stuff you can just tick on and off and whenever you want to so maybe sometimes you want to check check out something and then other times you don't want it on but one of the i think one of the things that a lot of historical total war players would probably have on at the beginning is this button right here unit character sorting so basically what this means is that the units well i can just show you guys by confirming basically what this means is all the generals go on one side or all the lieutenants go on one side and then the units get sort into their categories so archers together infantry together etc so you don't have to worry about these kind of different parts of your your units however after using this i kind of in, like liked the idea of having these lieutenants with their retinues really so i don't know maybe i'll, I'll change my mind but i kind of prefer the other way of of doing it so with this off 
As well as that, you can also set it so that you drag in a single line as well, so you don't have any of this auto formation where it sticks your archers to the back, and you can kind of, I guess, use both of them UI features to, you know, kind of feel like you're playing more of a historical total war of old. But yeah, for now, we have set up our forces, and I think it is time just to rush forward into the enemy position. And I'm actually going to go ahead and stick our lord a little bit further back. I don't want her to, to die too quickly, and I don't want her HP to go down, but she will be coming in very fast. So let's go ahead and get this battle started. So obviously, the AI has the defensive positions, and they're going to be trying to hold them as best they can. As well as that, they refuse to, uh, to duel me in any way. I think they don't even have a, a general. Maybe they, oh, they do have a reinforcement general. Oh, yes, yeah, so we have to be very careful. They have reinforcements coming on somewhere, don't they? They do indeed. Um, I obviously want to try and kill their, their cavalry as quickly as possible. Um, and probably throw her in now just to, to smash them up. And we'll throw our sentinel over on this other side as the extra archers come in and get ready to help support. And the fighting has been slowed down in this build of the game. So compared to the other one I saw, um, you will see um, much more kind of, you know, kind of contested battle lines and choke points being a bit more valuable. But the battles are in general still pretty fast. Heroes still dive around the battlefield. So as you can see, he's just been literally fighting a unit of peasant spearmen, basically. I guess these guys are a little, yeah, maybe they're militia at the end of the day. And he's down to half HP, so you have to be really careful with your general. As well as that, the AI is now turning up the reinforcements, so we're going to have to go ahead and quickly deal with that. Hopefully our archers are going to be efficient enough to deal with that, and we can bring back the, uh, the bandit queen herself to go ahead and help us out. So let's just send in our, our dudes to go deal with that, get the archers to obviously focus that down. And then hopefully we'll send our lords to go and deal with their lord and that should hopefully end it. Nice, you've just killed the enemy lord. That was pretty quick to, to go ahead and do so. Um, now we just need to move on and deal with these archers. Hopefully, obviously after losing their lord, they'll be more inclined just to simply break. Um, but yeah, just charging down these archers is, is really important. If we have no missile capabilities right now. And boom again, our general is routing. I, I need to get a little bit better at keeping them on the field of battle because this could seriously hurt me in a more important battle. So you can see the reinforcements dying in the background. And now we have secured the territory, getting some much needed money, some much needed infamy. And I'm actually going to loot and occupy because it gives us infamy and also money and we are in desperate need of cash. So even though it's gonna, we're going to have to repair this and the population is going to be a little bit unhappy, I think it's worth it. Oh, wow. No, wait, what? Even if we loot and occupy, the buildings don't get damaged. I know it does destroy the build. Oh, it's because it destroyed it. Yeah, because it's abandoned. Okay. Well, we're going to spend the... I guess it wasn't really worth it then if we have to now spend the 1500 But you live and you learn. And I guess we did gain some infamy, so... All is not lost. Interesting, we just got a mission to kill the other bandit lords. So I, I don't know if we can do that though, because we now have this option for the bandit alliance. We can either attack him and try and claim his territory, or we could befriend him and try and uh, get him on our side. And the fact that we have so many enemies in the south, I'm pretty tempted to go ahead and befriend him. Um, I honestly just don't know what I want to do. It's also really nice that now the UI provides you with this so you can actually see who you're fighting and who these events are about. Um, it's a great improvement to the previous titles. I think we're just in no fit state to go to war with him. So we are simply just going to befriend him for now and improve our diplomatic relations. That doesn't mean that we can't kill him in the future. But for now, we have so many enemies to the south and we cannot sit idly by until we have the southern mountains secured. The fall of the tyrant's empire. So the capital is in a uh, civil war right now, and Don Ming is currently fighting, I think, a bunch of other people. Yeah, you can see the, uh, the emperor in control of him, but he's going to have some problems right now, and hopefully everyone can just be fighting down here, and we can maneuver our way southwards to secure that. Oh, very nice. So we give over our master cross, which I imagine is probably a pretty useful accolade. I mean, that's good, but we just don't need it. We don't have a strong economy, and we'll gain a, a non-aggression pact with Yong Shao. A Yong Shao, I think is how you pronounce it. Um, and he's very powerful. He's one of the main coalition dudes. So we want to befriend him, and he'll give me 600 gold. Hell to the year. As long as he's not coming to get me, I think I'm pretty safe down here, and we're going to continue to try and move down. This is kind of what I was worried about, and we might just have to forego taking that settlement to get over here to protect our own settlement. I'm not sure we're we're gonna get over there oh the city is undefended oh the city is undefended perfect then let's move in we'll take the settlement 
Where did they move their army to? Because obviously they couldn't see me because I was in ambush mode. So they couldn't see me moving closer to the city. So I guess they expected me to be elsewhere. And because this is such a good city, I think we can occupy it. But I, I feel like this isn't how this faction plays. I feel like we shouldn't be occupying it. But it's a level 3 city. Um, and, you know, obviously if we take the farmland... I mean, it's still in the mountains. I, my plan is to take everything in the mountains. Okay, another event has popped up. And also it's winter, so I'm going to get screwed here trying to go over to the settlement. But it is, uh, yeah, we have got a cool event. So we can decide to go ahead and boost our relations with a handful of these characters, whether we want Yin Li or also uh, this other guy. And I think this guy right here is the dude we want because he's already level two. And I think he's going to become a pretty powerful commander when we can field a secondary army. He's currently the guy who went ahead and is doing the assignment in this city. We have cornered them and it is time for us to make our move in the dead of night. I want to move in here and just try and quickly wipe them out um, because by killing them we can then just focus in one soul direction and hopefully just really maybe push up another general in our army as well as um, as well as you just take more territory and start actually getting tributaries to our kingdom okay guys we are now in the battle and preparing to try and storm this toolmaker position i'm going to try and use these woods to my advantage and basically just shoot their men down to weaken up their front line we're also taking a bit of missile fire over here oh my god we're actually already getting hit here and as you guys saw in the last episode or in the last battle these towers do some serious damage, especially to heroes, so we need to be a little bit careful. My god, the defensive positions are really good in these battles. Like, I'm trying to smash through these spearmen, but with the help of the towers and their generals, they are just inflicting some serious damage on me, and I think my uh, my peasant swordsmen are going to break very quickly. As you can see, I've kind of broken them right here. I'm going to try and push forward uh, with our general as well, try and make our way a little bit, you know, into their territory. Because once we've taken this tower, I think we'll be much better off. It's just actually breaking through in the first place, which is going to be our biggest issue. Let's continue to advance in. I brought over more infantry, but yeah, we're breaking here, and we didn't really do a lot of damage nice you've just broken down another of their lord and as their reinforcements pour in from this defensive position we should be able to counter them and just have the weight of numbers to, to really take them down we'll probably use our archers as well to hit them we don't have like we have literally barely any ammunition left but we'll try our best to beat them also using a few flaming arrows as well i didn't realize that this general had flaming arrows on her, her retinue but we just have like no ammunition now at this point so we'll try and pick up a few more shots, lower their morale. Obviously, killing their generals has definitely helped. And I, I guess it's just a slog towards the end. The balance of power is still really even. But I'm hoping with the fact that we've killed a lot of their generals, we can claim a victory this day. It's just killing these guys is going to be so crucial. So as you can see, I am just simply trying to brute force my way through in this battle. Use our binding fury as well to... To go ahead and damage anyone around us. I think this is more of like a dual ability. But it does say it does splash damage. So that's pretty good. But she is also very low. And I obviously do not want her to die. And she's fighting spears. Can we maybe dismount her? Would that be a good idea to fight spears? Possibly. But it actually possibly wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. Especially maybe this guy as well. And we'll keep on using his ability as well. Because for 20 seconds everyone gains a much greater uh, boost. So let's keep on pushing on them. Man we have finally broken through on this left hand side. And it couldn't come any quicker. Because we are starting to lose this main engagement. We need to envelop them. I'm not really sure what we're going to envelop them with. But I, I think killing their generals is going to be important. So we're going to send... I mean, I kind of need him to constantly keep boosting these guys. We're getting around these gaps in the battle line as well of our I mean, archers. They're not exactly great. But yeah, let's try and break him. If we can kill him, then this strategist should go down very quickly. Yeah, this battle has turned into a real slog. Like, these front lines are just going at it right now. I guess having some cavalry would just be so valuable to send, like, round one of the flanks and into their back. I think one, more, one way or another, this battle is going to be over pretty soon. Whether it's me breaking or this shock in the back of their formation is going to be enough just to completely break them. As we are moving in our strongest axemen, the hybrid bowmen. To hit them from the back. And they've obviously got their general pretty close as well, who I want to go and maybe try and take out with this. But as you can see, their formations are looking pretty weak. And yes, just like that, they're going to break. This is perfect. Man, what a close battle that ended up being. We were brought to the brink. We literally only have 
like 200 men left remaining so defending in these battles is very easy actually if we're well, not easy but as long as you defend these towers and the choke points it's gonna take some mangonels or something to break up your defense we have secured our province back and a much needed 100 gold right there we are just immediately gonna occupy it because this is obviously rightfully our territory and we killed their faction leader so someone else is now taking control even though i think we have actually secured her last province. I mean, where is she? Oh, all the way over here now. She's probably in hiding or something. And yeah, we've actually destroyed their faction. Perfect. Uh, that's really good. But we're going to need some time to replenish. And we are kind of vulnerable if these guys want to come in. Wow, the audacity of this guy. He wants us to sign a peace treaty and me to give him this territory. Definitely not, my dude. Definitely not. Okay, we are basically fully replenished. It is now time to make our move. They obviously do have an army inside of the city, but we can't sit idly by. It's going to be a pretty close one, actually. I might just starve them out for a turn just to help out. They don't. They have reinforcements coming in. No, they do have. Re yeah, they don't have reinforcements. But yeah, I think what we'll do is we will just siege them out for a turn. And I really like the way you see all these like families migrating out with everything on their backs. That's kind of cool. So let's starve them out. Um, see if they'll sally out and fight me. Because the balance of power looks pretty good. When I hovered over it, I guess I didn't discover the army. It was looking good. And we also have a unit of cavalry now, which is nice. His army, yeah, his, his army is probably quite easy to beat. But it's inside the defensive fortifications. And we've seen how deadly that they can be. Also, we got a really bad event that is ruining our public order everywhere. So after we've secured this settlement, so we have two provinces under our control in the mountains, we're probably going to have to take a little bit of time just to boost public order back up. But don't worry. I think once next episode, we're basically going to fight this and then end the episode. And they did decide to sally out. So let's dive into our last battle of the episode. And obviously, if you guys are enjoying this, be sure to go ahead and drop a like and a comment down below. And obviously, once we hit 350 likes, I'll go ahead and upload the second half of this gameplay. The enemy approaches. We must do our best to hold this line. So I basically set my archers on the front line. And I then got supported by the purple dude's vanguard. Uh, units. He's got axemen and swords, which are going to kind of hold them in place. On the flanks, I do have the spearmen of Zhang Jingjiang, sorry, and then I also have a unit of saber cavalry over here. So my main plan or battle plan here was just to draw them out into the open, where we can use our superior archers just to pepper away at them, and then as they get closer and closer, we'll charge forward. And as you can see, our archers are already opening up in this battle. Okay, so I quickly overestimated how many units of cavalry they actually, oh, I mean, how many units of archers they actually had. And that's going to make this unit of uh, this unit of cavalry literally so valuable because they have a lot of missiles right now and it is definitely showing. Hopefully we can push forward. We've got a lot of these good abilities we can try and use to debuff them and move forward right there. Let's get these axes involved as well. So we'll debuff them, we'll buff them and I just, let's just hope that our infantry line can hold. Obviously, having our generals fight in this is going to be risky, but necessary, I think. Let's also get her the hell out of there as well. We do not want her to die, but uh, our main general can move in uh, to fight that. And uh, cavalry, go, 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 go. Wow, they are focusing down my cavalry as much as physically possible. But we are starting to cause some dismay in their ranks, which is good. And the, bone, the buffs that we just used are going to be very useful. Um, and our cavalry is now on their missiles. That's good. More infantry coming, but we are getting cracks in our formation. Ooh, yeah, nice. Our general, yes, perfect. Killed him. Move on to the next gal, because our flank has just crumbled. That is not good. So we have routed a large portion of their missile force. I think from now on, I'm just going to let the cavalry deal with, like, trying to chase these guys down as they come back from routing and really focus on winning this infantry fight now by throwing an infantry everywhere I can, because, yeah, their front line is deadly. And I think the quicker we break these guys, the better. I also really dig the way that the uh, flag bearers just stick their flag down as soon as they get a chance to. Uh, but yeah, let's definitely go after their other general as well. If we can kill their faction leader, that would be catastrophic for their morale. Um, and elsewhere, we are holding. We've got more bonuses to pop off there and more debuffs to use in a couple seconds as well. Perfect. We are breaking them in the center. Hopefully, this will be enough. Now, obviously, even if we win this battle, we don't take the settlement. We still have to beat back whatever survives. But, I mean, the fact that we are... Basically, you know, routing them and chasing them down as they route is going to be very good. 
overall, that was actually a pretty easy battle. I was expecting a lot worse after what happened in the previous engagement, but hey, I'll take it. We can now just auto-resolve the city and basically have ourselves two full provinces. So let's take on the replenishment, I guess. Just now, our men are actually because uh, we're going to fight a siege yeah, battle now. It's probably a good idea to take that replenishment. It is winter, so our military supplies are going to be getting hammered right now. Wow. But we should just, yeah, we easily have the advantage right now. So let's, uh, we could demand their surrender, but no, we are the bandit queen. We are not merciful to these corrupt warlords taking advantage of the people. No, no, no. We'll move in. Um, and this is something that we could loot from the cash, honestly. But they are very, yeah, we're having some pretty serious unhappiness issues right now. So we'll just occupy it um, and not destroy the uh, the, the settlement because the farmland is, I think, fairly upgraded and it gives us a ton of food as well. So there we have it. That's going to be probably the end of the episode. Uh, we have managed to secure ourselves a nice little holding in the mountains. So if you guys are enjoying this, be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. Give me advice on what you think I should do next. I mean, obviously making this, uh, these provinces and cities a little bit happier is going to be very important. But I think as soon as the uh, the devastation goes away, as well as the event, the negative events we have, things should be good. And then after that, I, yeah, I don't know. I'll see what you guys say, but we might have to move north, go against the bandit dude up there. Or we just keep on going towards the capital and we go ahead and loot and burn Chang'ang, which is obviously the capital city. I mean, it'd be an insane battle to try and do it. Level 6, I don't think we could. But yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one and fish out.